So let's explore the alert types in CoreLogix. The way to do this is to click on the new alerts button up here. So this is from the alerts dashboard. When you click on new alerts, you'll be presented with a modal. All alerts can be given the same metadata, alert name, description, severity, and labels. As you scroll down, you'll see the different alert types. Let's go through each one, as well as a cool little use case that can be applied to each type. Standard alerts are really straightforward. They just count the number of logs that match a given query and filters. Um, really useful if you wish to count things like um, number of errors produced by an application. So really simple, really basic, but really powerful. Um, ratio alerts are really cool. So these will count two different um, logs and measure the, diff uh, measure the ratio between them. So a really, really nice use case here is error rates. I'll give you an example. Let's say for every successful request, you get an info level log, and for every unsuccessful request, you get an error level log. What you can do is you can measure the ratio of the error logs to the info level logs, and this will give you a percentage. Um, this will give you an idea. So you could say, you know, more than 10% um, of logs uh, from this application are coming out as errors. That gives me a 10% error rate. I want to know about that. So a really, really nice use case for the ratio alert. New value alert will trigger on a, a value if it has never been seen before. Um, so this is really important. This will enable you to detect things like IP addresses that haven't been picked up before. So if you have a closed system and a new IP address appears, you wish to know about it. Of course, you can also um, specify the time range as well. So unique values, um, yeah. Um, unique count um, will be, um, your, your, it's very similar to standard in the sense that you're counting the number of um, log entries returned from a given query. But um, what you do is you group them by a given key. So I'll give you an example. Uh, you could have application name here. So group them by application name and count. So for example, if one application, uh, if the number of applications increases by, let's say, is, is, is exceeds 16 uh, within 30 minutes, then uh, trigger an alarm. This is a really nice way of keeping track of individual values. One thing you could do here, really nice use case, um, IP addresses again. Uh, you could be detecting activity per IP address. And if um, uh, if a new IP address appears, again, you could uh, do that. You could also check for things like uh, different types of alerts, different um, severities. There's lots and lots of different ways to slice this one. Uh, time relative. Um, so what this will do is it will measure um, the increase over time. So for example, you can say, um, if my alarm has increased um, by 100 entries uh, compared to the last hour tell me about it so this is really nice especially for detecting sudden spikes in traffic so for example let's say it's perfectly normal for you to expect um, a fluctuation of a hundred logs um, uh, in a given time frame in any time frame over the day you might want to say okay let's make this 200 then that's well above so if the ratio is more than also it could be less than um, 200 compared to the previous hours so that's an increase of 200 in the previous hour tell me about it of course you can also group it as well by a given key this is the same for all alerts as well we'll get into grouping after this after we've gone through all the different uh, types metric alerts um, enable you to define a promql query um, and you can define um, uh, alarms based on the values of those uh, metrics really really powerful there's lots and lots of different um, ways to configure this so after we've gone through the the highlights we're going to dive into metric alerts because they have a great deal of power and a great deal of configurability um, you define a PromQL query, you can define different conditions. Um, so for example, you can say if the value is, if the value of the metric is more than 10 for over 10% of the last minute. So that means at least it, over 10% of the last 10 minutes means at least one minute matched this threshold in the past 10 minutes. Um, there are some nuances to that and we'll cover those nuances because they, they're going to fall into the troubleshooting section. Um, but a basic analysis is that 10% um, of the last 10 minutes essentially means within the last 10 minutes, at least one minute matched our threshold and in here of course you can expect to write the promql query get a nice autocomplete there so um it's just a really, really powerful way of implementing this um tracing alerts uh, are driven by tracing data so um a really really nice use case for tracing uh, alerts is um, to measure latency to track slos um really really common use cases to tra track slos here so you can track um this is really powerful actually if you wanted to with tracing uh, alerts you could say okay all of my applications must respond in under 500 milliseconds. If they are higher than 500 milliseconds, um, anything in my system, um, 
and more than that and there has to be a certain so if, if, if you get like random outliers that's not too bad but let's say um 500 spans at least in the past 10 minutes are higher than 500 milliseconds tell me about it this is a really nice way of a system-wide slo um, and then of course you can make this more specific so you can zoom in on different applications you can zoom in on different subsystems uh, specific services attached to the um, span as well as different actions so you could say for example actually um, what's really really important to me is this get quote endpoint this is the one that actually really matters I don't care what system it is I don't care what the service is all I care is that every request to this particular endpoint this particular action um, is faster than 500 milliseconds that has to happen and yeah, so this is a really, really powerful way of defining alerts for an SLOs and SLIs, as well as error use cases as well. You could just say that uh, your system has hard timeouts of two seconds. So if you're hitting that two second mark, there's a chance that you're getting some serious issues there. Um, so really, really powerful way of um, tracking system performance. Finally, flow alerts. Flow alerts are really cool. Um, we're gonna do more of a deep dive into those now. So um, flow alerts are essentially a way of chaining together multiple different um, alerts um, into a single story. So where typically um, you would get an alert that says uh, the database CPU has reached 95%. So okay, I know where the problem is, but I have no idea what the events were that led up to that. So with flow alerts, what you can do is you can say, okay, um, my journey kind of starts at the S my S3 bucket. And then what, what happens next is if the S3 slows down, um, do I get any traces, for example? You know, slow front end traces. If S3 slows down, slow front end traces. So if my S3 alarm fires and then my traces are slower within the next 10 minutes, um, and then what happens is error rates increase. So uh, we could say more than usual 400 errors, for example. Um, you'll notice here that this is a mix of log and tracing uh, type alarms. Um, this is because flow alerts are a completely unique type of alert. It's essentially one alarm defined around logs, metrics, traces, and security data. So this enables you to define these really complex, really sophisticated stories without having to worry too much about the underlying alarm. So it's actually a really nice way for um, users to engage with alarms that already exist. And um, there's a loads and loads of different things you can do here, but a really nice use case is when you're trying to bake the root cause in. And um, once you've actually defined this, and you can apply that and you can see a preview here, a typical name for a flow alert might be something like um, um, now consider the difference here before we were talking about the endpoint so a normal alert might be slow front-end performance now what we're saying is an s3 outage has caused slow front-end performance so you're not uh, seeing the alarm and hunting for the root cause you're being told the root cause straight away it's a really really powerful tool Strongly, strongly recommend that all users engage with this and try it out because it means that um, it's just it's a really nice way of some of those critical paths to the system. You can wrap alerts around them straight away, these flow alerts, and then you know instantly when it happens. Okay, I know exactly what's happened. I know what's gone wrong here. Um, and of course, they can be grouped by key as well. So if you have a specific um, collection of uh, different um, uh, fields in the logs or in metrics or something that um, you want to split this alert on, you can do that as well. Um, so really, really powerful, really clean. Um, and in my opinion, um, it's kind of the jewel of the alerting features here because it ties all of the different other kinds of alarms together. So um, that was a, a run through of um, the different types of alerts and a deep dive into flow alerts. Um, we're now going to explore um, configuring some of these alerts more deeply. Um, we're not going to dive into all of them because there are some um, similarities between them. Um, but we are going to dive into standard alerts because that has some configuration details, metric alerts, um, and then we're going to go into um, the troubleshooting section of the video.